What's up everybody? Jacob here with Smetting Performance. For today's Tech Tip Tuesday, I want to talk about valve spring clearance, um, how to measure it, how to check your installed height, how to check your open height, as well as make sure that the valve springs are going to work with your camshaft's lift profile. So, let's get some valve springs out here. These are a set of Manly LS dual valve springs, but this process will work regardless of if it's uh, it doesn't matter what valve spring it is, this setup will work. So let me go ahead and get some of this stuff unpacked. Um, the cylinder heads I'm going to use today to demonstrate this on are our new Smetting 275cc 15 degree LS3 cylinder head. These are actually factory casting heads that we use. Um, and then we run them through our CNC machines. This is a port that we feel like is the best all around setup. They will include hollow stem intake valves and the very lightweight exhaust valves. Um, Whenever you can lighten up the valve side of the rocker arm, it's going to help your RPM. It's going to help stability at RPM. That way your valve spring has to work less because it, it has less weight that it's trying to control and move around. So let me get this stuff unboxed and then we'll continue. Okay, whenever we are talking about valve springs, there's four main components to the equation. Starting with the spring cup or locator as they're called. Um, this dude's job is basically provide a hardened surface for the spring to ride on instead of the soft aluminum and as well locate the spring to the valve guide so that way the spring is perfectly centered over the valve stem and not swinging around or moving inside the head. So you'll see that this locator, the outer diameter of that step fits the inner spring very tightly and then this hole will fit very nicely around the valve guide. So these come in different thicknesses um, they come with inner locators or outer locators. An outer locator will look like this. And it does the same thing, but instead it locates the outer step of the valve spring. So then we have the actual spring itself. Um, I'm not going to get too much into, talk, into tech on these. We'll do that for another video, but long story short, you have singles, duals, triples, um, even the single springs, you'll have a straight single where both sides are the same diameter. You'll have a beehive and you'll have a conical, but we'll talk more about the differences of those later. Then moving up, we have the retainer. Same thing. This has certain machined steps, again, to help locate everything and keep everything nice and centered on the valve. We want to reduce harmonics. Um, these ones happen to be titanium retainers, so they're extremely lightweight and strong. And then we have our keepers or locks. And basically all these need to do is hold everything together. A lot of people think that this little groove in there is what physically holds the valve spring onto the valve. You can see that receiving groove. However, that groove is no more than a locator. What actually holds everything together is this machined angle on the side there. So you can see that basically this is all going to get wedged inside of that retainer under the spring pressure and it's going to make a basically a friction wedge to hold everything together that locator does not actually take the abuse. On really high pressure spring setups, you'll see these the, that degree start laying back. Now I've got some, for example. So these are really small, lightweight LS 8 degree. So that angle right there is 8 degrees. These are a big block Chevy 10 degree. A little more aggressive angle of attack. Hold everything together nicely. So those are the valve spring components. These are our cylinder heads. Let's get the head down. And we'll start with the intake valve. So we'll just pop it in one of these holes. Really nice fit. All right, then to check, first thing we need to check is the installed height of this spring in this assembly. So with no shims to start with, we'll drop in our locator. And you again, you can see how it perfectly fits around that valve guide. There's very little play right there. We'll drop our retainer. And then I'll need to switch you guys to the tripod for the rest of this. Okay. So again, we have our retainer. Put the retainer down, take your locks, locate them in the groove, and then we'll pull the retainer up around everything. So basically, this is how it would be assembled, except for we don't have that spring in there because we need to measure the installed height. Um, these are called snap gauges. They're super convenient for finding diameters of certain objects really quick and easy. They have a little release down here on the bottom. So anyways, let's compress this down. 
And we're gonna stick this inside, expand it, checking it the other way. Make sure we have a good measurement. No matter what the step is in engine building, your measurements need to be exact. So now, the diameter of these two little anvils is the exact distance between that locator and the, up, and the top of that retainer. Then we'll just make ourselves life easy, take a set of calipers, and you can see we have an installed height of about 1.82. Now we'll take our assembly We'll steal a couple parts, we just need the locator. Um, you don't want to put the spring by itself in a spring press because again, this inner spring is a lot shorter than the outer spring. And that has a different um, step right here. So it's installed height is going to be slightly different than the outers. Anyways, now we'll move over to the valve spring vise. Here we are at the pressure checker, vise, whatever you want to call it. We'll put our valve spring inside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this ridge right here on the flat part of the spring sticking out of the retainer. And I'm going to compress this vise until the bottom of my caliper hits this floor right here. And so let's come down. So on the seat, these springs have about 160 pounds of pressure. Now let's go back to our lift of 628. That's close enough. And we're going to do the same thing to find our open pressure. Which comes in right at 400 pounds. Now, to check our coil bind clearance, Let's go ahead and zero it out at full lift. We're gonna unlock the caliper so it can slide again. And I am now gonna compress the spring all the way until the coils are totally bottomed out and touching. And I'm gonna repeat. All right, lock it down. And our coil bind clearance is 71 thou. That's perfect for this engine, perfect for this setup. I love the pressures that this spring is gonna have with our cam. With these really lightweight valves, it's more than enough pressure to control the RPM, especially with our cam lobe. There's a lot more to how much pressure you need than just the weight of the components and the RPM range. The cam itself, how gentle or aggressive the ramp up the cam is for the lifter, really plays into a part of how much pressure you need. Okay, there you go. That's kind of the quick, easy way that I use to check my valve spring coil bind clearance. Um, make sure you consult with the camshaft people or your valve spring people that you're working with to determine how much coil bind clearance they want. Every application is going to be different. If it's a really mild stock, you know, small block 350 that has a truck cam in it, it doesn't really matter. We'll run anything from 80 to 200 thou clearance. The higher the engine gets in RPM range and performance, we'll start tightening that clearance up. Um, in extreme RPM applications, I'm talking 10,000, 9,000, just pushing it on a push rod motor, we'll actually start tightening up our clearance. I would rather see, instead of 70 thou, I would tighten it up to maybe even 10 to 20. And that's because as that valve spring gets closer and closer to coil binds, it's gonna start dampening and removing all of the resonance and crazy harmonics that are happening. However, for a street strip 7500 RPM LS3 combination, I'm more than happy with 70 thou again. That stuff's really only for high, high end engines that, you know, those valve springs are gonna get replaced after every other pass or very frequently, more than you and I ever would wanna replace stuff. But anyways, that's kind of a wrap for this week's Tech Tip Tuesday. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you want to see me talk about in the future, and I'll see you guys later.